everyone, so before I begin, um, I'm sick as you can probably tell, um, but today I'm going to be doing, um, I guess like a paranormal question and answer. Um, I had the full intention of uh, filming a Ouija board video with uh, Frankie and my mum. I had the full intention of filming a Ouija board video, but we just couldn't get it to work for some reason. Um, so I posted on my Facebook and Twitter, um, you guys should go follow me on Twitter and like my Facebook page because I post a lot on there, um, about any questions that you guys may have. Um, I didn't specify like paranormal questions, I kind of just did ask me any questions, so I got quite a few, which is good. Um, and I'm chewing gum because my nose is so blocked, so I'm trying to chew like really minty gum, hoping that it's going to like clear me up because ugh, I literally like, I was really sick with a bad chest infection like a month ago and it took me so long to get over it and I just got over it and now I'm sick again. Anyway, first question is, what is your biggest achievement? And I haven't read through these by the way. Um, without kind of getting like too personal or too like emotional or like too, you know, in depth, I think it's kind of probably just getting to where I am today. I mean, I'm not you know, majorly successful, like I don't have a job, um, but I've just kind of have, I have, and I have had, um, I guess a lot of things going, go on, um, you know, I guess I just have a lot of things that I've had to overcome and that I still am overcoming every day, and I could have quite easily turned out a lot different, and my life could have turned out a lot different, so I guess just being the person that I am, um, I mean, I still obviously have bad days, as does everybody, um, but that's probably really like the biggest achievement, I guess. Got three from the same person. The first one is, what were your thoughts when you got your first paranormal experience? Um, I remember, I'm going to try not to sniff, I'm sorry, that's so gross. Um, it was when I was a little, like, if you guys haven't watched back on my videos, then you won't, you might not know what my first experience was. Uh, basically, it was when I would have been, because I'm originally from Melbourne, and then when my parents split up, my mom's from Sydney, so we moved back here, and we lived in the house, our first house, until I was about three, so I was maybe four, but that's probably pushing it, I was probably, yeah, like three, and um, it was a townhouse, and it had two stories, and you walked up the steps, up the stairs to the like top floor, um, top story, and it was just a long hallway, first door on the left was the bathroom, door on the right was my mum's room, and my uh, bedroom was at the very end of the hallway, like just right at the end, and I would sit in the bath, and I just remember like seeing um, people just like ru like rushing past the, because um, obviously I was little, so, I don't think my mum obviously would have been with me if I was that little having a bath, she wouldn't have just put me in and be like, well, you're up, like you're right. Um, but yeah, I just remember like seeing people like run past my, uh, run past the door while I was in the bath. And I don't like think it scared me because I mean, they say, you know, when you're at that age, you kind of can't tell, there's no filter in between like what is real and what isn't real or not what's real, but what, you know what I mean. Um, and I think I was just like, why is there people in my house that I don't know? Like, I just, I don't think I really thought that much into it. Um, second question is from the same girl, did you, have you had any new paranormal experiences? Um, I haven't. Um, and what's your advice to someone who might be having paranormal experiences? How will they know if it is actually paranormal? Okay, so before I, okay, that's a really good question. So when I have an experience, if I'm going to make a video about it, or even in general, I try and kind of think of other things that it could be. So, um, for example, like if your blinds were moving, you would make sure that it's not windy, you would make sure, that's just an example, um, and that's only because I'm looking at my blinds, um, you know, you'd make sure it's not windy, you'd make sure there's no doors, windows open, you would kind of go through everything that you possibly could in your head to try and explain why you're having the experience that you're experiencing. Um, that's pretty much how I would kind of try and figure out if it actually is something paranormal. Um, and my advice would be... Um, just to know that you're not alone and that you're not crazy because I've, like, I've said this in a couple of videos before, but I, um, from year 7, year 8, not so much year 9, year 7, year 8, um, I went to a youth group and it was mainly because I started a new high school, didn't know anyone, my best friend that I've made friends with when I started, she was, um, quite religious, so it was just a good social aspect at that age, and, um, 
I only really went for the social aspect. I've never been religious, haven't been brought up in a religious household, and I got told that I was crazy. I got told that it was all in my head. So my advice would be, you know, you're not crazy. Um, you're not definitely not alone. Um, I would, you know, there's a really really brilliant website called yourghoststories.com and I've said this in a couple of videos before um, but that's where before I kind of discovered YouTube um, sorry my hair is really bugging me it's going back behind my ears um, before I discovered YouTube I found that website I don't even know how I found it but it's really it was a really good kind of outlet for me to say what had happened like through my childhood things that I was experiencing and just to have people validate what I was experiencing was really really good so I would definitely recommend finding an outlet whether it be YouTube or website like that or even you know um, like here in Sydney and it might be in Melbourne um, we have a thing called Mind Body Spirit Festival um, just finding some sort of an outlet um, would be really really good someone said what are you most afraid of um, <laughs> my life no um, Ironically, paranormal stuff, which you guys would probably think that I'm like this tough person that isn't scared of anything. No, every time I experience something, it scares the shit out of me. I'm quite scared of the dark as well, which, I mean, it's so stupid, you would think I wouldn't be. Um, yeah, so the dark, um, I guess I have valid reason to be scared of the dark. And heights, I am petrified of heights. Like, I live on the third story of a apartment block. Um, there's only three stories, we live on the top, and I'm fine, but if I, like, look over it, no, I can't do that. But I read somewhere once that you're scared of falling, not actually scared of being up high, which I thought was quite interesting. Um, after you curled your eyelashes off, how did you get them to grow back so quickly? Oh my god, that was a fucking nightmare. Um, I didn't do anything. I was like, oh my god, I'm gonna have no eyelashes for, like, uh, I was a mess. I was hysterically crying, I was like, I have no eyelashes, I'm so ugly. Like, <laughs> it was bad. Um... They just sort of, I guess, grew back. It probably took... Oh, God, it was so long ago. I would say it probably took a solid, like, two months to where I could stop wearing false eyelashes every day. So, um, yeah, I just wore false eyelashes. I think there's stuff you can get, um, like, Revitalash and stuff that you can put on your eyelashes to make them grow thicker, but I didn't have any, so I don't know. Um, if you guys don't know that story, basically, God, it would have been like two, three years ago. I was curling my eyelashes and the eyelash curler, and it was one that like, um, it had a spring in it, and it was always sprung open, if that makes sense. So that if you, like, oh my God, I'm having a mind like, if you went to use it and then you let it go, it would fling back open. I don't know what happened. I was curling my eyelashes, and it, I don't know what, I don't know, it just went onco. Curl my eyelashes. My hand slipped because I think I just moisturized my face or something. I don't know. My hands are slippery. Slipped and it sounded like a zipper and oh my god, it was the worst pain ever. <laughs> have you ever experienced a traumatizing dream and couldn't stop thinking about it for days after? Yes, I have. So if you go back and watch my um, 100th video where, um, okay, back story. So the unit block that I live in, I have lived in this unit block, not this unit, this unit block since I was six. Um, we lived in the first one for, I don't know, until I was like maybe 13, no, 15 maybe, yeah, about 15, um, then we, no, 7, no, 16, I don't know, however, however many years, and then we had to move because we read. We lived in the second one, which is where I started my videos, we lived over there for about two years and then we live here. Um, and so the first two units we lived in, we lived on the bottom floor. So I was quite used, and if you, if you live in an um, apartment block, you know what I'm talking about. Oh my god, let's get the fucking bejesus out of me. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's windy outside, so that was the door closing. Oh my god, let's get the shit out of me. Um, <coughs> so, yeah, we lived on the bottom floor, and like I said, if you guys live in an apartment block and you have people living above you, you get used to hearing, you know, people walking and sounds and whatever. Um, and then we moved up here, <laughs> and we kept hearing the sounds, well I did, and I was like, oh that's, like, I just, I, honestly, like, I didn't even think twice about it, because I was just so used to, um, hearing it, like, there's a train going past right now, because we live next to a train line, I don't hear it anymore, um, you just, you know, you just get used to sounds. So, um, yeah, so we were constantly hearing people above us, things moving, dragging sounds, bashing sounds, whatever, um, and then, yeah, in my 100th video, because um, there's a manhole thing to get up into the roof, 
right out front of our front door. So in my 100th video, I, you know, took you guys up there and showed you photos because I got orbs and stuff on camera. Um, but I had a dream. This is like one of the worst dreams I've ever had. So um, it involved me and a lady, girl. And if you guys watch True Blood or if you guys have ever watched True Blood, Sookie, um, or Anna Paquin, I think that's her name. The girl in my dream looked exactly like her. But basically, in the dream, I walked out the front door, looked up, and the manhole was like half open and I saw two fingers come down and then it was the, a girl's face looking at me and she screamed. She just opened her mouth and screamed at me. That is probably the only dream that I've had that stayed with me for days. Like it just petrified me. I woke up and I was like, oh my God. Like, yeah, it was bad. And of course I just got off where the questions were. That was so annoying. Okay. What is your favorite paranormal experience? I would have to say my favourite paranormal experience isn't even mine, I'm stealing it from my mum. So um, my grandpa, her dad, who passed away two years ago in September, he was really sick, um, probably for a good couple of years, like there was just a lot of stress and anxiety and family problems and whatever surrounded around him and him being sick and him passing away. So it was quite stressful on mum, um, Nathan, my ex, as you guys know, and I. and. Um, the last time we saw him, because we got home and then he passed away the next day, because um, they say when people are on their deathbeds, they usually wait for family and stuff to see them. Um, so the night that, I don't know if it was the night that we got home, it must have been the night he passed away, because if it was the night that we got home, he was still alive, so that, yeah, no, it was the night that he had passed away. Um, Mum was asleep in her bed and woke up to, because um, my mum is like a very light sleeper apparently, so she says all mothers are quite light sleepers because you know, you never know if you have to get up in the middle of the night, um, and she said she woke up to like feeling pressure on the edge of her bed, and she woke up and sat up, and it was him sitting on the end of her bed, and he basically said something along the lines of, I don't remember it exactly, um, you know, thank you so much for everything that you, Nathan and Courtney, have done for me, I'm at peace now, um, you know, just thank you, and it was pretty much along those lines, and mum said he looked really healthy, and I mean, I, it was, when she told me, I was like, that is amazing, so it wasn't my experience, but that's probably my favourite of someone that I know. <laughs> How was your experience with your makeup classes? Okay, there's two questions in this. Um, I'm still, well, I'm still doing my diploma, I finish in October, it's really, really good, um, yeah, I love it. Um, second part to the question is, what was your most unforgettable paranormal experience? Well, I've had a few, like a lot, and I never for, whoops, sorry, I never forget any of them. But the one that sticks out to me um, would be uh, so, like I said in my um, a question ago, my grandpa was really sick, and he lived in a small country town, and um, it took us about eight to ten, depending on traffic and stops, hours to get there. So we would obviously stay there for a couple of days. Um, <clears throat> and so my grandpa lived with his best friend of like 30 years, they both retired there, um, and they weren't in a relationship or anything, but, um, so my grandpa, as well as just being quite frail, he was really, really deaf, and, um, his friend that he lived with, his best friend, um, he got the shingles when he, I don't know, like 15 years ago, and it's the sort of illness that if you don't treat it, it basically fucks up your whole nervous system. So towards the end, um, because he's passed away now too. But towards the end, they were sleeping in the same bed because if my grandpa yelled out his best friend, um, if my best friend, wow, what am I trying to say? If my grandpa's best friend tried to yell out to my grandpa, he wouldn't hear him because he was so deaf. So they just kind of needed to be in the close vicinity of each other. So they slept in the same bed. And then, um, so then there was one of their bedrooms was spare. And they insisted on this night that we were staying there that Nathan and I were going to sleep in their bed, in the spare bed. I think it was my papa's bed and I was like, no, that's weird. So they had a spare bedroom that had two single beds. Um, and because, um, I, like I said, they lived out in the middle of the country, so when there was no lights on, it was pitch black. Um, so you walk into the room, and there's a window on, like, the opposite side of the room as to where the door is. And there was a single bed along the window, which my mum slept against. Ugh, against the single bed. She slept in the single bed. And then there was a bed um, against the wall next to the door. And Nathan and I slept in that bed. Nathan was on the edge of the bed and I was against the wall. Long story short, um, everyone had been asleep for a while and um, 
like I said, my grandpa and his best friend were quite frail. They were old guys. They had walking frames. You could hear them coming for like five minutes before they even left their room. So I know it wasn't them. This is the most amazing paranormal experience I've ever had. Long story short, my mum was snoring. Nathan was snoring. I had, I think I'd just drifted off to sleep where I was sort of in between sleep and being awake. And all of a sudden, um, the light turned on and our, the bedroom door was still closed. And I kind of was like, what? And I was like opening my eyes and there was like this white figure. I couldn't see any hair. I couldn't see anything. I just saw like the shape of the head and shoulders. And they leant over Nathan and like came like this close to my face and then like turned their head. Saying this, you would think I would be petrified, but it was just like this amazing like calming feeling. And I was just like, it probably only lasted like five seconds, but I was like face to face with this thing, like this close. And it just kind of, it was, it is kind of creepy. It just kind of went, but it wasn't, I don't know. It was just like this amazing calming feeling. And I remember I was elbowing Nathan and I was like, get the fuck up, like wake up, wake up. There's someone in the room. There's someone in the room. And then all of a sudden the light switched off and they were gone. And I know I was awake because like I said, it was, it's pitch black in the country. I looked up to the ceiling light and I could still see it glowing because it had been turned on. Um, and then I leant over Nathan and grabbed my phone and looked at the time. So that's probably the most amazing thing ever. I mean, I'm not religious, but I kind of almost feel like it was like an angel or something. I don't know. It was amazing. Like you, it just, I get like, I literally, I don't know if you guys can see, I have goosebumps talking about it. Like it's just, oh goosebumps it's I don't know it's just like the most amazing thing I've ever experienced I wasn't scared it was just so calming and peaceful I don't know it was really weird the next question is how do you protect yourself before during and after a Ouija experience a uh, Ouija board experience so beforehand um I hear of people saying things beforehand and saying things during um beforehand my mum and I usually just say something like you know we only accept positive energy positive spirits um something along the lines of that and then afterwards we always sage I'm not going to go into how to sage you can find it on google and stuff but I've staged heaps of times and it always works um the next question which actually made me laugh out loud was how do you manage to sleep every night knowing there are spirits in your house and I replied saying I won't sleep anymore um I don't know it's sort of like you know you get used to what your kind of version of normal is so I don't know it's just it is what it is I just don't really think about it which is weird you think I would I don't know and the last question the last what the last question is when you have a paranormal experience what makes you rule out logical explanations also why are you so beautiful thanks Rachel um <clears throat> so like I said I go through um everything that it possibly could be in my head if I like I said, I use the blinds analogy. If um, What am I trying to say? If I can't tell, you know, like if there's another explanation for it, like, okay, so the blinds are moving, but the window was open a little bit. I go to, okay, will any, will any of the other blinds moving? Like you kind of just try and rule out everything. If I'm stuck and I'm like, okay, well, there could be a slight logical explanation, but also, hello, my life. Like, I'm going to probably lean more towards paranormal, but I try to also lean towards logical explanations. I then go into how I was feeling and if I could feel anyone around, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, I don't know. There's, it doesn't really matter what I do or say. Like, there's always going to be people that, oh, it could be explained by this. Or, oh, it could be explained by this. I'm like, well, yes, it could. But also, it also, there's times where it's not. Like, how would you explain that angel person coming this close to my face? I was wide awake. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. So that's the end of my videos uh video oh, i can't speak today thank you guys so much for all of your questions let me know if you guys want to make this like a weekly or a fortnightly thing where i answer your questions because i really like talking to you guys i love getting questions from you um also if you don't follow me on facebook this is just like a little self promo tooting my own horn here so i'm 20 in australia you can get your license when you're 16 when you're learners I only got them last year. Um, long story short, I've been driving and I have a lesson in like an hour and I'm so excited. Driving was just like, oh my God, it was just like a hurdle that I was like, I'm never gonna overcome this. I'm never gonna drive, but I've started doing it and I love it and it's so easy. So yeah, um, I'm gonna try and get a Ouija board video out for you soon. Hopefully, if I can get it to work. Um, but yeah, leave me your answers below as if you want this like a reoccurring thing because I think it's awesome um but yeah I should go because I've got my driving lesson soon so I'll see you guys in my next video bye